Well, hello and welcome to this edition of Tesla Timeout. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host. Yes, I have a hitch today that I'm going to get installed in my Model 3. So this is all, this is whole show is dedicated to stealth hitches out of the U.S. I want to thank them. Now, I purchased this. They shipped it to me. It got in about a week with FedEx, but I had to buy it. They did give me a discount, so I am doing this show as a promotional uh, shout out to Stealth Hitches for giving me a discount. I do want to thank them, but I'm excited to get this hitch installed. Now, why is they, you know, why are they called Stealth Hitches? Well, the reason is because they're installed behind the bumper. And if you look at Model 3 hitch videos that are out there, you'll see that everybody has to take off the bumper, the lights, uh, and the under skin mechanisms to be able to install this properly. <clears throat> not a very, it's not a hard job, if you know what you're doing. It's several hours, and it does probably take one or you know two people helps. You can do it with one. So it is a do-it-yourselfer. You can do it. They give you all the parts, of course, to do it. However, I look at this as a long-term investment. Uh, I like the bike. Uh, I need to get back on the bike this year. COVID hasn't been friendly. So I'm anxious to put the hitch on. I have a four-bike rack, a Yakima system that you've seen on my Nissan Leaf here. And in fact, in my Nissan Leaf that you're seeing here, I actually had the Eco Hitch installed in that one, and I loved it, never had any problems. Stealth, which is a more premium hitch and does cost more money, has, as you'll see when I show you afterwards, the receiver mechanism that's a simply a key lock with a button that drops out, and it's very convenient to uh, remove and insert this. It takes a matter of seconds, really, or less than a minute. So I think the convenience factor is worth the price point, and there are lots of videos out there, lots of other uh, Model 3 guys and YouTubers have done their own installations. Now, I'm not going to do an installation. I'm taking it to a company called Rack Attack here in the GTA, Greater Toronto area. They have a few outlets. Uh, they're a chain. They've done my other, all my other hitch installs pretty well. They always do good work. They warranty their work, so I'm taking it to them. I'm going to let the experts install it. Yes, I'll pay a few hundred bucks for that, but to me, I'm going to own this for, you know, this car for eight or ten years, and I want that longevity, and I want that peace of mind knowing that it was installed and there's a company that'll stand behind that installation if anything goes wrong. So I like that feeling and I'm willing to pay a few hundred bucks more for that over the long term. But you do what you need to do. So do some research, but uh, I want to thank Stealth Hitches for shipping me this product as quick as they did. I thought it was going to take you know three or four weeks, but it actually came within a week, so I was pretty lucky there. But again, I did pay for this. They did give me a discount though. Uh, so let me go to Rack Attack. Now I can't film the installation or take pictures because of COVID. We're still under technically a lockdown situation in the in the uh, in Ontario here. So I, I'm, I'm dropping the car off and then I have to go about five la hours later, four or five hours later when they call me saying it's ready and then go pick it up. So I won't be able to do any filming, but there's lots of videos and pictures that are out there of the installation process and what this looks like <clears throat> under the skin. But the whole point of it is, is that when you see me again with the vehicle, you won't see the hitch. It'll look just like this. And that's the secret to stealth hitches. So let me get down to Rack Attack, get them to install it, and then let me show you what it looks like. All right, well, welcome back. So um, I had the hitch installed a couple of days ago. It rained for the last day or so, so I didn't get a chance until this morning. So we have some nice bright sun and some dry and some warmer temperatures to actually film the balance of this episode on the stealth hitch. But as you can see, it's installed. So you won't see anything external because again, it's installed behind the bumper as the installer took everything out. Uh, some of the rear lights, the bumper, put it on and put everything back in nice and neat. So I have the receiver in now and that's all you'll see. And the beauty again about this Telf hitch is the ease that this receiver mechanism will come in and out. And let me show you how that works. All right, just wanted to point out that this is that little trap door that I, that I mentioned earlier that's underneath the bottom of the newer Teslas. I think they came out with this in 2019. You can check, you can go under yours and if you see this door, it's got two um, uh, connectors that you just use a flathead screwdriver that it pulls down and that means you don't have to cut into the bottom panel to for the receiver portion to come out this is a nice neat uh, effort and then when i take the receiver out i can put this back in and again keep it aerodynamic and keep it from stuff coming in under the, the underside plastic you know dirt and debris because it's still pretty dirty and wet when i took it off so a little bit of stuff does get in there but i wanted to show you this piece now also the receiver itself uh, comes with a lock it comes with a key lock and what that means is that when it's on like this, nobody can steal it. There's a key lock, it's locked in. You can't go underneath there with a, with a ratchet and unscrew anything because there is nothing to unscrew. It locks in, it locks in, and then you, you uh, activate the lock and it doesn't come out. But again, I wanted this for the convenience. So let me show you that convenience factor. I'm going to try to get on the floor here on the ground, bring the camera down and try to get you some good angle shots. 
All right, so I'm underneath the car, and uh, so what you do is, you, and hopefully you can see all this, there's a cap, there's a rubber cap here that you just loosen off the lock, just protects the lock, as you can see, so now it's exposed. Take one of the keys and put the key in, if I can see it, there we go. I get to the right side, then I'll be able to see it. Okay, and then turn the key, and then the lock pops out. See how it pops out there? Hopefully you can see that. So that means it's in an unlocked state, and I can just turn it and leave it in an unlocked state. Oh, actually, I locked it again. Okay. It's the first time I'm trying this. I'm playing around with it, so I'm learning as we go. All right, so I've unlocked it now. Take the key out to get it out of the space, so now it's unlocked. So go to the other side here. There's that locking mechanism. And what you do is you put your hand underneath the bottom here of the, just to take the weight off of the receiver portion and go up to the top here and you just turn this and it will unrelease like that. That's it. And it just drops out just like that. So this looked a little bit more complicated than it really is because I'm doing it for the first time. I'm playing around with it. As you do it a couple times, this will become pretty straightforward. Literally, it should take 30 seconds or so to get this in and out. If I want to put it back in, so I'm going back to bike riding, then I just slip it in and give it a quick push and you hear that lock, that means it's locked in and it's solid, it doesn't go anywhere. Then you use the key lock just to push it in and it will lock, it will protect this from anybody stealing it, that's what it does. So again, to disengage it, just turn this lever all the way till it clicks and see how it dropped out. So that's why you want to have your hand underneath there or something to catch it so it doesn't bonk on the ground and start banging the bottom of this thing. Really, really easy system. It's a stainless steel blocking a locking mechanism to block lock, if that makes sense to you. Really easy to use. And also what they give you, if uh, you want to use this, let me just dig it out here, is this other piece. So before I put the trap door mechanism back on, which I'll show you how easy that goes on. They give you this, uh, this plastic cover piece and this just goes in to the locking mechanism here, just like this. You just push it in like that, a rubber seal, and it protects it just from any gunk and dust and dirt coming up here, which is pretty cool. And then I can just put the top back on it like that. Hopefully it'll fit. There's a little bit of a piece sticking out here. There you go, tuck it in. So, see if I can get this thing back in. Now with this cover, there are arrows indicating, see the arrow there? Indicating that arrow goes to arrow. And in this case, the arrow is here on this front piece. So that means that the, uh, the arrow goes to the front, not to the back. So, and again, you have this thing you can cover the lock with to protect that. So you basically, Put it into the snaps here. Put it underneath, arrow to arrow. As soon as I can find it, which is under this rubber piece, jam it in, and then put it in there. Slide it in, and then you turn those locks, and you're done, you're in. So that's how it goes in. I'm probably gonna trim a little bit of this rubber piece here because it's creating just a little bit of resistance on this middle tab here on this metal tab, this little rubber. So I might trim this little piece here so that this will go under because it's right in the gap. I just noticed that for this uh, protector piece. So that was something that I'll probably do. I'll just cut this little flap off. Don't really need it. And then uh, I could be able to get this thing out. It just pulls out just a rubber protector. So yeah, this piece here interferes with that metal tab. So I'm just gonna shave it off around to make it easy. But there you go. You learn, folks, as I learn. That's the way my style. So that's the stealth hitch. And you can see how easy it is to come on and off. And that's the secret of this system. Sorry, what I meant by trimming that piece. See how I've uh, flattened this up here? Just so that tab has a spot to go into a little bit easier. So I've just trimmed this. I may sand it down just ever so slightly, but so I'll show you how this piece goes in a lot easier. Just angle the tabs, push it in, push it up. Then you have the, two, the flathead screwdriver to turn these to lock it and it locks in. So there's still a little bit of a gap here. It might have been how it was before, I don't know. So I might shave off a little bit of that rubber stopper at the top there just to make this, let's shave a little bit off of here just to make this a little more flush. But 
The purpose is to keep this uh, locking block clean and protected from the elements because stuff can still get up here, as you guys know, in the Model 3s. All right, so here it is with the Yakima hitch installed. And as you can see, it just goes in normally, as you would see basically on any other bike rack. It has nice uh, separation from the Model 3 so that when I put the bike on this first one, it's going to be nicely separated away from the vehicle. And uh, it's also got a bolt that for anti-sway, anti-locking. So this moves around a little bit, but in, in the station there, it's pretty solid. So this is pretty good. Um, so that's the setup. All right, so that's it for this edition. You've seen here the picture of what it looks like with everything installed uh, in some of the videos. So it looks good. I'm really, really happy with this. And I'm gonna uh, probably go biking today. Test it out, it's a nice day, or at least in the next week or so as we get some warmer weather. So thanks for tuning into this edition of my Tesla Timeout series, where I'm featuring the Stealth Hitch uh, two-inch receiver uh, bike rack hitch. So this is a non-towing hitch. They have two packages, one that's not for towing and one that is for towing. And the difference is the towing package one comes with a wiring harness and a little bit and some mechanism that you can click the chains to that you can add to that block. So it's got a few other components on it. Um, otherwise, they're installed this very similar way, but the wiring, of course, adds a level of complexity. I don't need towing. I just need it for bike racks, as you've seen. Excellent hitch. I would certainly 100% recommend it. I do put links and things like that in the show notes just for you to follow and look up this stuff much, much more easily. So, again, thanks for tuning in. And until the next time, please, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye. Hero shining silver beach alone. Up down from New York City.